This is why I train in martial arts. I signed up. To, well, I signed up for these Minute with Maxwell daily uh, emails that send you right to a YouTube video by John Maxwell. These things are phenomenal. I wish I could hit them all 100% of the time, but sadly I can't. But every time I listen to one of them, it, it, it just gives me something that I just think is beautiful, and I can't really say it better than, better myself, so I'm just going to let John Maxwell say part of it. But I'm also going to put a link below this to the original video. And, of course, the John Maxwell, the John Maxwell team has a uh, particular place for me because I went to college with someone who was part of the John Maxwell team, and his name is Ed Reed. Ed was dropping gems when we were kids. Ed's stuff, I really think subconsciously, Ed is part of the reason why I ultimately became an instructor because I saw it as a way where I could do for students what Ed did for me when he was pretty much, he had just become an adult himself. So I'm just going to play this last part, but I'm going to do a little bit of a different twist on it because like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to link to the original video and let John Waxwell give you the knowledge, but I'm going to do something else just, just to be contrarian. I would encourage you find somebody that you can either disciple and mentor or find somebody that needs to pour into your life. But I would encourage you to take action on that today. Because none of us are as good as all of us, and all of us can get better if someone pours into us. That's what Disciple is all about. Following somebody that can teach us and take us to a higher level. Now, some of you know that in the martial arts world, since the advent of MMA, you got people that have a problem with anything traditional. They hate the word disciple because in the Chinese martial arts, which that's not, that's not what I big up even though I have some exposure to that, but that's not what I big up. You're called a disciple. When you're a student, you, you're a student and you become a disciple, as far as I know, and, you know, and your teacher is called master. The term master is something that kind of cuts across all types of martial arts disciplines, but not necessarily in combat sport. Usually in combat sport, it's coach, okay? The whole idea of discipleship is one of the reasons why I actually was reluctant or hesitant to say, hey, I'm doing my own thing and I form my own style. Even though that's what I wanted to do after a while, I think, in my heart of hearts. I didn't want people to think that I felt like I knew everything and therefore I don't need anyone else and I don't need to learn anything from anybody else. I've got it. And that's probably why sometimes... I have felt like uncomfortable because when I was doing independent gradings on my own, I would let um, my um, son and daughter grade me because they're black belts. Or, you know, the first independent grading I did was my son and daughter and another black belt that I studied with before back in the day. And my son, he's always say, he's like, we ought to, you know that we ought to give you a high rank, but I don't think you would take it because... You know, and my thing is because I don't want people thinking that I feel like I think I'm better than everybody else. I think I know everything. No, I don't care what degree I have. I'm always going to be studying for somebody if I feel I need to. If you know something I don't, I'm going to want to train with you. I don't care if I'm an eighth degree black belt and you're a first degree black belt. Your first degree black belt is something that I have zero degree of knowledge in. Why wouldn't I train with you? Or if I already have a black belt in that thing, I want to learn from you and you don't. But I know you know more about that thing than I do. You just don't have a rank in it. I'm going to come to you for lessons. I am. I'm going to come to you for lessons if I got the time and the money, of course. That's the main thing. I'm going to come to you for lessons. And I think that should be fine. That should be cool. That should be wonderful. But let me do one thing. Since, and please... For the umpteenth time, please go watch John Maxwell's video. It's only going to be a minute and a half of your time. If you can sit through one of these videos, you can sit through a minute with Maxwell, okay? I'm going to talk about how people don't get discipleship. How people 
messed themselves up, screwed themselves so that, that nobody can help you. It's three things that come to mind right now. Number one is you assume that everybody who is like the person that happens to show up and tries to mentor you or tries to just to help you out. You assume that everybody who's in that group that that person is in doesn't know what they're talking about. Do you dismiss them because they're old? You dismiss them because of the color of their skin? You dismiss them because of their gender or sex, sexual orientation? You dismiss them because of where they're from? You dismiss them because you don't like the style that they're studying? You dismiss them for reasons that are ridiculous. Because, oh, oh, they're old, they're too young, they're too this, they're too that, they're too whatever. You know. They have good information for you, but you just blow it off because you just feel like you're just so special, you're just so wonderful, so you don't need to listen to them at all. Another reason how we screw ourselves when it comes to being disciples is sometimes we can't accept the fact that somebody that we knew may have leaped ahead of us in knowledge. Even if it's temporary. They may have leaped ahead and gone off in a direction or an angle that we don't know. And I probably, because we used to, you know, be ahead of them, we don't want to listen to them. You know? Perfect example, and this is something where I've almost gotten in trouble myself, is now my son is a lot physically stronger than me. So, you know, there's times when he's giving me tips about how to improve strength that I didn't necessarily want to listen because I remember when I was stronger than him. But I have to remind myself, he is a lot stronger than me now. And he figured out, he went beyond the stuff I gave him, took it to a new level. So if I want to have some strength and conditioning tips from him, when I hit the target weight that I want to reach and then I want to build muscle, I have to listen to him. And when I've listened to some of the tips that he's given me, I've managed, I've managed to maintain the strength that I've wanted to maintain. So when I want to go on, if I want to try to bench like four or 500 pounds, I need to listen to him about that because he's done that and he's gone beyond uh, me in that. So that's why I should listen to him. But if you just get, if your perception of a person freezes, so that you can only see how they were and you can't see how they are, you're going to lose out. It would be just like, like my, my um, I won't say exactly who the relative is. One of my relatives is a, is a doctor now. And I remember when she was a little girl, right? Uh, she was a little girl. Oh, so cute. And when she's giving me medical advice that actually saved my life one time, I had to let go of when she was a little shorty and realized I'm talking to a doctor, the doctor's telling me I need to drink some water now or I'm literally going to pass out again and, and die. I need to listen to this doctor. Okay. Not little, little braids and pigtails person. This person is a doctor now and they're giving me professional advice. So this is something I like to tell people, you know, when people have the idea of the, of the uh, topic of, I don't couldn't learn from it. Like you, you, if you feel like you can't learn from a black belt because they're 16 to 17 years old and you're 26 to 27, so you can't learn a martial art from them, you are who I'm talking about. I tell people like this, like, I may not trust you with my car keys, but that doesn't mean that you can't tell me how to Kia. You can show me how to do a kick better. Sure you can. If you're doing it, if you're doing backflips and stuff like that, I can't do backflips and stuff like that, and you're telling me how to do it in a way that I know is not going to kill me, I'm going to take your advice on that. Doesn't mean I'm going to give you my credit card, but you have, you have to think about, you have to know that this person is talking in the area of expertise. So stop thinking about necessarily who they are or I should say something about who they used to be or who you think they should be based on where their station is in life and just look at the information that's coming towards you. Okay. And uh, the last way I think that people screw themselves out of discipleship is this just our ego. All of this really revolves around the ego. If you don't like the word disciple, 
Okay, you ain't my daddy. You ain't can't tell me what to do. You one of those type of people? Man, you're never going to get, you're never going to reach the highest levels. I don't care of what it is. You're never going to break through to the top. These days, as competitive as things are, you're never, let me see if I can get it right there at the bottom of the screen. You're never even going to get to the middle because you're uncoachable. Nobody wants to be bothered with you because they can't tell you anything because you're, you're so uncoachable. Yeah, you're just uncoachable. You know? Don't be uncoachable. Drop the ego. I know it's hard, but man, when you do that, there is just so much stuff that you can learn out there that you're going to have a ball doing it. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. And if you're near me, sign up for a class because I'm trying to start a Saturday class up again and I need students. And as always, peace and thank you for your time.